Hey everyone, today I'm going to be introducing you into two new rules, uh, conjunction and constructive dilemma. So we're going to start off with conjunction. So I'll just write it out, conjunction. So um, if you guys remember uh, earlier, we did a rule called simplification. And in case you don't remember, simplification goes, if P and Q is true, then P is true. And the logic behind that is, the conjunction operator is only true when both of its conjuncts are true. So if P and Q is true, then that means that P has to be true as well. And so conjunction is kind of the opposite of that. So conjunction says if you have P and you have Q, then uh, I'm going to write the conclusion. You have P and Q, right? And so you could do this through one, two, conjunction. Um, that's how you write it in, in a proof. You'd get um, P and Q, and you justify it through one, two, conjunction. And so uh, this kind of works in, in the opposite of simplification, as I said. So um, simplification is if two things are true, then they're true individually. And this says if two things are true individually, then they're true together. Um, so that's how conjunction works. So the next thing I'm going to do is introduce you into the constructive dilemma rule. So constructive dilemma says if you have P then Q and you have R then S, if you have P or R, then you have Q or S. So let me just uh, like order this. And so you might be wondering how this works exactly. Well, remember that the OR operator is true when o only when one of uh, its disjuncts are true, right? So if P was true, then P or R would be true through the addition rule. And if R was true, then R or P would be true again through the addition rule. Um, so even if P was false and you had R or P and R was true, it would still be true. Or if P was true and P or R uh, in P or R and R was false, then P or R would still be true. And so in that way, if you're able to get P or R, then you're able to get Q or S. And you're able to get Q or S because depending on whatever is you're able to get through uh, the true, um, through whichever letter is true, you can still get the other one through addition. So I've come up with uh, two examples to explain this rule. Um, I see that I didn't write this um, I see that I didn't write the name of this up here, so I'm going to write it up here. Constructive Dilemma. Okay. okay I spelled Dilemma wrong. Constructive Dilemma. Um, so I, I brought a few examples up here uh, that we can take a look at. So these are already constructed. Uh, we're just going to analyze them to kind of get an idea of how it works. So in this instance, you have if P, and, if P then Q and if R then S, but instead we have P. So we have P, and then we can get, um, we have P or R here, which I didn't justify. So let's do, say through two addition, we have P or R. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. So let's say through two addition, we have P or R, right? So we're just going to leave that there. Remember, uh, previously we had if P, uh, if P or Q, uh, P or R, right? That's what it says at the top, if P or R. And then so we get P then Q through simplification, right? And through P then Q, we can get Q through, um, we can get Q through modus ponens. So uh, this would be two, four modus ponens, okay? So that works fine. Um, and then we're able to get Q or S through, um, through uh, five addition, right? So again, P then Q and R then S, and you have P or R, right? You can do that because you add it, then you get Q or S, right? And so it works the exact way, um, it works the same way in the opposite way as well. Um, we haven't formally discussed this rule yet, but I, I want to introduce it to you really quickly. Um, the rule that I'm talking about is uh, commutative, and we're going to learn that in the next video. Um, really, uh, simply put, commutative says that. P and uh, Q is identical to, or P and Q is identical to Q and P. Um, and this is also like a, a law in mathematics, right? Like 5 plus 2 is the same thing as 2 plus 5. So um, 
its logic goes like that way. So before we had if p then q and r then s, we have r then s and p and q, and uh, they're equivalent to one another. So in this case, we have r then s and p then q. We have r, and then when we have r, we're able to get r or p. And just uh, in the same way that these opposites are the same thing, these opposites r or p instead of p or r are also opposites. Are also well, they're also identical. Um, so we simplify again in the same way that we did in the previous example with r then s through one simplification, and then we get um, oh, and again in in this uh, in this example I didn't justify this. So through two addition, um, yeah. So we get r then s through one simplification, then we get s through um, through what two four modus ponens, and then we get s or q which is um, again identical to Q or S. So if you have R then S and P then Q and you get R or P then you get S or Q. And again those things say the same thing. So in this instance R was the true prem. Well yeah R is the premise we need at least to be true. Um, P might be false but it doesn't matter because remember that the, the OR operator only needs one of them to be true for the whole thing to be true. Um, so this is just a quick introduction into uh, the rules of constructive dilemma and the rules of conjunction and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video